Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about a Leica that's a lesser known Leica than the famous M models. So this is my Leica Flex SL. So this Leica was in response to the, the Canons and the Nikon SL, SLRs that were coming out back in the day. And this was Leica's response to it. And it's an interesting camera. First of all, the first thing you notice about picking up this camera is that it's very heavy. It's, it's almost like a brick with the lens right here. And it's very well made actually too. I mean well made in the sense that if you drop this it'll still work because like I said it's a brick with a metal body construction and it's pretty durable. I have a dent right here that um, doesn't really affect anything but this goes to show you how uh, strong this camera is structurally. So I'll go over the basics of this camera. So there's a cold cold shoe right here. It's not a hot shoe and I mean to be honest with the Leica you never really use flash anyway so it's not really an issue but it's just there maybe you can mount the GoPro or something and on the side right here you have your shutter speed which is just a wheel that clicks into place it's pretty firm actually to uh, you need a good amount of finger strength to turn this wheel right here and the, you have the shutter count right here which is unique on its own as well because if you notice other SLRs, the shutter count um, goes in a different direction as this one does. So if you, as you wind your film, uh, you'll, you'll notice that this is kind of the opposite of what you're really used to with the regular SLR or the regular Leicas. The counter actually goes a different direction, which is pretty interesting. I mean, it's not really a big deal to me. So right here you have your rewind knob um, that's very similar to the other SLRs that you see in the market. And for the ISO, it is part of the rewind knob. You actually turn the little wheel. There's a little button that you press and turn at the same time to set the different ISOs. And the ISO numbers are actually on the side of the wheel right here, which um, is okay. I mean, um, I have to get used to it because, you know, with like us ISO wheels right here, for the M series, but for the SLRs, it's right here. All right, so moving on to open the film, uh, the film door latch is right here. So there's actually pictures right here that shows you that show you how to open the door. So what you do is you press this little button right here, and you go up on it, and that opens the camera. Right, inside the camera, it looks pretty standard like any other SLR. You have the, the film catch right here, which you slip into film right here, and you have the wheel right here to, um, to latch the film in place. So loading it is very similar to any other traditional Nikon or Canon from, this, from the time period. And right here, you have your film release right here, film release button. And you have your tripod mount, mount right here as well. All right, and to lock it back into place, you just go down, and it locks into place. Perfect. Okay, so uh, this camera does have a light meter, but uh, one of the disadvantages of this camera is finding the battery for these light meters because because the light meters uh, require a specific voltage, and they were based on old mercury batteries, which are no longer made, and they are hard to acquire. And I think it's banned in this country, in the States at least, to uh, make or sell these batteries. So that's the disadvantage. Um, but I don't use a battery, I just use an external light meter. You could send this off to get it serviced and convert it to uh, a set of voltage batteries that are more prevalent uh, today. but. It's really a hassle to do that, and it's gonna cost you a hundred, couple hundred dollars, I believe. And um, this body costs about a hundred dollars to buy on eBay, so there's really no point for me to send it off unless I really want to one day and use the light meter. But if you look in the viewfinder right here, uh, the light meter is actually the traditional uh, needle that uh, moves back and forth, up or down, depending on where your exposures are. And you have the battery port right here, which, like I said, I never use the light meter because of the battery issues. So um, it's really not a functional thing for me right now.
All right, so for the lens right here. So Leica SL uses the Summicron R series lenses, which are significantly cheaper than the M series lenses, but uh, there's some disadvantages to it as well. Um, I'll go over the build quality first. It's very well built, it's very sturdy, metal construction. The focus ring is very smooth to turn and the aperture ring is very smooth with um, firm clicks with different apertures that you select. But the disadvantages are the filter size. So for these specific types of lenses, you have to use the old 6 series lenses, I mean filter. So I don't know if it's different for the other um, lenses of the same R series, but for the 50 millimeter lens that I have right here, um, the filter sizes are kind of off. They're kind of a specific kind, and there's only one way to get filters for these. So I know some companies make custom filters, but uh, they're made custom to order, and it's not really worth it to buy it. So you got to find the old Leica filters. So it's a two-piece filter. So you have the actual filter and the retaining ring. The 14160 retaining ring that goes on top of the 6 series filter that keeps the filter in place. So that's that's a little bit of a hassle to source because you gotta go on eBay and you know try to find two of these items. And they're not too expensive. I think I got the set for about $40, $50. But it's just one more hassle to worry about when shooting these lenses. But um build quality wise is very good very sturdy and it's like I said it's very cheap um, I mean cheaper relatively than the M series lenses and if you can find a good one uh, it comes with the lens hood right here which is pretty neat as well and they fit really well into place so even with the filter at the retaining ring right here you could put the lens um, hood back in its place and it fits really well it's really snug and you have a cap right here that goes on top of it and it's very well made and very well thought out so it's pretty impressive. And to release the lens right here, you have the lens release right here. And you have the timer right here, which um, I don't ever plan on using. So it's kind of useless. But uh, you have it right there if you need to uh, use it one day. But that's really about it. Um, next, I'll show you some pictures I took with these. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the camera. and. Um, it's different than the M-series, also in the sound that the shutter makes, it's pretty loud, so if, I'll try this for you. It's very loud, compared to the M-series camera, so here, here you go one more time. And I'll show you what it sounds like compared to a Leica MP right here. And hit it. That's it, <laughs> not very loud. But uh, compared to this, yep, there you go. But that's my Leica SL. If you want one with the lens, filter, and the body, get one for about 600 bucks. Still pretty expensive for a film camera, but cheaper than the M series film camera. So this is an option for you if you want a Leica, just a little different. And that's really about it. If you like this video, give me a like. Thanks.